Good morning and a very warm welcome to St Mary's this morning where we have a service where we recognise the baptism of Jesus. We celebrate the baptism of Jesus. So from wherever you are, you're watching across the UK or the globe, you're very welcome to join us in this service. So shall we start and worship God as we sing the Servant King? Let's sing together. And the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. 
There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Let's pray together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's stand and worship God and say our Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And I'll call it for the baptism of Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you reveal Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as your Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And now we have our readings by Rachel and our second reading by Sue. These opening verses of Genesis are very well known. They speak of the beginning of God's creation of the world. The phrase translated wind from God in the second verse can also mean spirit of God. This is sometimes understood as showing the role of God's Holy Spirit in the creation. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. 
Altogether, there are about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And please stand at home if you're able for our gospel reading together. Alleluia, alleluia. This is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And David, over to you for preaching. Thank you, David. Let's begin with a prayer. May my words and all our thoughts be acceptable to you, our Saviour and our Lord. Amen. Almost certainly the year 2020 turned out to be very different from what we might have expected this time last year. What of our new year? Well, we can only wait and see, can't we? We are at the beginning of the year, and we have three readings this morning which speak about beginnings. And I think it would be good to look at these and to remind ourselves of them. The first reading we had is the beginning of the first chapter of the book of Genesis, the first day of creation. This is the beginning. God created the world. The details in that chapter reflect how people understood the world some 3,000 years ago. We would express it differently today. And no doubt 3,000 years from now, people would express it differently again. But the point is always the same. God created the world and he did so deliberately for a purpose. And later in the opening chapter of Genesis, we read that we were made specially in God's image and in his likeness, so that we can have a relationship with him. God as the creator comes first in the church's traditional creeds because everything else depends upon it. Without God as creator, the world would just happen to exist and we would just happen to exist in it. There would be no purpose, so no accountability. It simply would not matter. You could choose to be kind, you could choose to be cruel. That would be your choice. And no one could say that your choice was right or wrong. And I would feel very lost in a world like that. There is a risk that thinking only of God as creator could make him seem remote. But it said, if you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. And our gospel reading today told of another beginning, Jesus who was about 30 years old at this point, was baptised by John the Baptist. John's baptism was not part of any existing ritual. It was a new thing. With his hair coat and his leather belt, John dressed like an Old Testament prophet, and he behaved like one. He announced that God was about to do something special, so people had better get ready for it. And John's baptism was for people who wanted to change their lives to repent, and so to be ready for this something special that God was going to do.
John recognised that Jesus was that something special. The baptism by John marked the beginning of Jesus' public activity of teaching and healing, and it began a chain of events that led on to Jesus being crucified and to his resurrection, events which were necessary in order to restore our relationship with God. Our third reading is in the, from the book of Acts. It describes events of around 20 years after the resurrection of Jesus. Ephesus was a major port on the west coast of what is now Turkey. There was already a Christian community there when Paul arrived and began his work there. Our reading today told how Paul found some disciples of John the Baptist and baptised them again, this time in the name of Jesus. And they received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Paul went on to spend about two years there in Ephesus. We are told he spent three months going into the synagogues, trying to convince the people there that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah they'd been waiting for. When he had to stop doing that, he went and preached the gospel in a lecture hall, as well as carrying out a more personal ministry of healing. A man with enormous energy and commitment. So, three beginnings from our readings this morning. The creation, the beginning, underlying everything we believe about God, ourselves and the world. The baptism of Jesus and the beginning of his ministry and activity. Paul arriving in Ephesus, one of many beginnings in the work of spreading the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Today we stand as successors to St Paul and to all those Christians of the past who've been faithful disciples of Jesus and have spread the word about him. So we also must continue to do this, to live as faithful disciples and to be willing to tell other people about him. Our three readings are about beginnings, but they're also about the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. God was present at the creation, in the beginning, God. When Jesus was baptised, as we heard in our Gospel reading, the Spirit was seen to come down upon him, and there was the voice from heaven, You are my Son, with you I am well pleased. And when Paul baptised John's followers in Ephesus, they received the Holy Spirit. God's presence was with them in a very obvious and quite spectacular way. God has been present with people since then in many ways through his Holy Spirit, sometimes in spectacular ways and sometimes quietly within them and within us, because that includes today. When we begin the communion part of our service, the person leading it will often say, the Lord is here, and we reply, his spirit is with us. When we say this, we recognise God's presence, his Holy Spirit, with us today, whether we are physically in church or taking part in the service online. And the same applies to us when we're going about our daily lives. His spirit is with us. And so as we move forward into 2021, we can be confident that God's Holy Spirit his presence comes with us into it. Each day, the church's daily morning prayer service includes a prayer in which we thank God for the new day and ask that we may know his presence with us. I'll close with that prayer. We we'll just change the word day to year. So let us pray. As we rejoice in the gift of this new year, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Let's declare our faith in God. Let's say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, 
who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now we come to our time of prayer, so let's pray. Let's pray for the church and the world and let us thank God for his goodness. We pray for the church throughout the world. Heavenly Father, help all Christians through your Holy Spirit to discern your will for them and our world. Give all who follow your word the courage to stand up for gospel values so that your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our diocese, for Bishop Donald and John, as they continue to lead us as we begin to open our churches. We especially pray for those who long to return to church, but are unable to do so at present. Heavenly Father, renew in us your mission of service and teach us afresh how to sow your seed of love in our communities. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our world as it continues to find ways to cope with the current pandemic. We give thanks for the collaboration between nations at this time and for the medical advances which continue to take place. We ask that you will give wisdom to all in authority so that the right decisions will be made. And we especially pray for those working to find a vaccine against COVID-19. Lord, help them in their work and may their success come quickly. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those in our world who are perhaps forgotten at this time, the marginalised, the abused, the poor, those suffering from mental health issues and all affected through drought, famine and natural disasters. Lord, be with them and surround them with love and healing grace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our own nation, for key workers, NHS staff and carers, and all who have continued to return to work. We especially pray for areas with high number of infected by the virus. Take away any fears and apprehensions that they may have and surround them with your love and grace. We pray too for our local community, our local hospitals, hospices, care homes, our food bank, the garden house, the winter night shelter, local businesses and schools at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are sick in body, mind or soul and bring before you those who have asked for our prayers and be with them, Lord, their families and friends at this time. And in a moment's silence, bring our own prayers before our Heavenly Father. We ask all these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. We come now to share a time of the peace. Share the peace with somebody with you at home, in your household, or on the screen with me. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. 
on the night he was betrayed. At supper with his friends he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And let's pray together as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. The body of Christ, broken for us all. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for us all. Amen. And our prayer after communion. We thank you, gracious Father, for welcoming your children to feast in your kingdom. By your love unite us, and with your spirit send us in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who in Jesus, give us a spring of water welling up to eternal life, perfect in you, the image of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Our notices for this coming week are that we will be online again next Sunday and if you would like to book into church to come in person, please do. That's all our notices for this week. And now we have our final hymn to the river I am going to remember the baptism of Jesus. So do sing along at home.
join us next week online if you're able. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.